please welcome our contestants. Player one. <laughs> Player two. <laughs> Player three. <laughs> and now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Let's take you right now into the Jeopardy round. Clues are worth $200 to $1,000 in these categories. Fish and ships. Literary geography. Birds. Letters. State borders. And not nominated for best picture. All right, let's get back into this. Player one has control of the board. The moray variety of this fish is sharp-toothed and can be vicious if provoked. Yes, player one? That's correct. You again, player the one. The ability of the members of the family Exocetidae to get airborne earned them this two-word name. Okay, player one? Correct. <laughs> We return to you, player one. Here's Kelly from our Clue Crew with the clue. On this man's first voyage, brothers Martin and Vicente Pinzon commanded the Nina and Pinta. Player one. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> player one. Small freshwater fish of the family Terophyllum are known by this heavenly name. Player one. Good. <laughs> Select again. Built in 1816, the first private yacht to cross the Atlantic shared its name with the barge of this queen. Let's hear it, player one. Right. <laughs> You get to pick again, player one. In chapter eight of this novel, Atlanta is very exhilarating and temporarily even better than Tara. Okay, player two. Right. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Player two. In the preface to the Moonstone, Vishnu commands three Brahmins in this country to guard the title gem night and day. It's player one. Right. <laughs> a lot of clues. A lot. In Pride and Prejudice, Mrs. Bennett says, the country is a vast deal pleasanter than this city. It's player one. You got it. <laughs> Player one, pick again. Let's go over to Sarah. Hemingway's vivid description of Pamplona's San Fermin Festival in this 1926 novel helped make the running of the bulls a world-famous event. Let's hear it, Player two. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Player two. It's the first river mentioned in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Okay, player one. Right. <laughs> Where do we begin, player one? Perhaps this thrush, a type of babbler, hangs out at comedy clubs with the same named hyena. Okay, player three. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's listen, you white-bellied bustard. I know where you live. This continent, Savannah. Yes, player one? Good for you. 
Where do we begin, player one? This common long-legged wading bird gets its name from a prop used by circus performers. It's player one. You got it. We return to you, player one. Musical name of Cygnus Buxinator. Okay, player three. Hey, you're right. Where do we begin, player three? This bird of the family Gruidae can be distinguished from the heron by the bustle of feathers over its rump. It's player two. That's correct. <laughs> player two, make a selection, please, as we continue. It equals a 2.0 GPA. Yes, player three? Ah. Right you are. <laughs> player three, it stands for a metric unit equal to about a quarter gallon. Okay, player two. Good. <laughs> player two, it's the 21st letter of our alphabet. It's player two. Yeah. Right. <laughs> player two, in Morse code, it's three dots. It's player three. Right. <laughs> Where do we begin, player three? If your trademark application is okayed, you can follow the trademarked item with this letter in a circle. Yes, player one? <laughs> right you are. <laughs> player one, make a selection, please, as we continue. Of the four corners states, this is the southwestern one. Yes, player one? Hey, you're right. Please pick again. You probably know what's on North Dakota's southern border. On its western border is this state. Yes, player two. Good. Yeah. Where do we begin? You'll find this state on Kansas's northern border. Okay, player two. Yep. <laughs> Select again. It's the Daily Double. You're in second place, so what is your wager going to be? What are you going to wager? And the Daily Double Clue. Delaware's southern border is with this state. The lead is also yours. Player two. It's the number of states that border the Gulf of Mexico. It's player three. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Player three, you're in command of the board. At Bogey and Hepburn floated across the screen in this 1951 film that pleased audiences and critics, but not the Academy. Player two. That is correct. <laughs> a lot of clues. You couldn't drag a Best Picture nomination out of the Academy for this 1959 Billy Wilder film. Well. Nobody's perfect. Okay, player one. Right. <laughs> a lot of clues, a lot of... Ca the Academy must have been out to lunch not nominating this 1961 Audrey Hepburn, George Pappard film. It's player one. Yeah! Good for you. <laughs> You get to pick again, player one. In 1954, 
This Jimmy Stewart and Grace Kelly starer from Alfred Hitchcock didn't get a second glance. Yes, player one? Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look at the $1,000 clue. Driving Miss Daisy won for 1989, the year this Spike Lee film about urban racism was passed over. Yes, player three? That is correct. <laughs> player three is in third place and will select first in the double jeopardy round as we always do, right after this break. Categories for the double jeopardy round are The silent screen General information B is for Bard Hello, Delhi Moon R's And the meaning of the prefix Player 3, you start us off In Son of the Sheik, he played the title role as well as the character's father. Yes, player one? Yep. <laughs> Where do we begin? In 1920, at the age of 27, this actress known as America's Sweetheart played a girl of 12 in Pollyanna. Player one? That's right. Way to go. <laughs> Gary Cooper had a small role as a cadet in this first Best Picture winner about two flyers in love with the same girl. Let's hear it, player one. <laughs> right you are. We return to you, player one. <laughs> the first of the two daily doubles. You are in first place. Decide on your wager, player one. Here is your clue. In 1927's It, she played Betty Lou Spence, a department store salesgirl with designs on her boss. That puts you even further ahead. Please pick again, player one. Orson Welles said... The greatest Civil War film ever made was The General, starring and directed by this comedian. Player two. Yeah! <laughs> Player two, make a selection, please, as we continue. This general, first in his class at West Point, ran for president in 2004. Okay, player three. <laughs> right. <laughs> player three. This old soldier was a general at age 38. In 1930, at age 50, he was chief of staff of the U.S. Army. Let's hear it, player three. That's right, way to go. <laughs> Player three, pick again. More than 540,000 men and women served under this general's command of the U.S. forces in the Persian Gulf War of 1991. Okay, Player three. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Player three? The only place this general wouldn't march was to the presidency. In 1884, he told the GOP, I will not accept if nominated. Okay, player three? Aww. That's correct. <laughs> Player three. This army general headed American-led forces during the initial combat phase of the Iraq War as it began in 2003. It's player two. 
Correct. <laughs> Where do we begin, player two? Gassy surname of Sir Toby in Twelfth Night. Player two. <laughs> Player two. This ghostly guy is described by the witches as lesser than Macbeth and greater. Let's hear it, player one. Yes. <laughs> player one. His downfall was at Philippi. Yes, player one. <laughs> you get to pick again. At the end of Much Ado About Nothing, Benedict quiets this love of his with a kiss. It's player two. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> player two. In The Taming of the Shrew, she's courted by three men. Okay, player three. That's correct. <laughs> All right, let's get back into this. Player three. I think I'll just have a nosh. A bagel, cream cheese, and the Nova Scotia type of this. Let's hear it, player one. Yeah! That's correct. <laughs> okay, let's get back into it. I'll have one of these city omelets stuffed with ham, onions, and green peppers. Player three? You got it. <laughs> Player three? Someone pass me this noodle pudding filled with raisins and nuts. Yes, player three? Ooh. Yep. <laughs> Player three, pick again. It's a good night for one of these Jewish turnovers with a meat or potato filling. Okay, player one. Yes. <laughs> player one, you're in command of the board. Yeah. Answer. The other daily double. And you have the lead. What'll it be? The clue. Something smells fishy. Must be this chopped fish patty mixed with crumbs and eggs and served cold in a jellied broth. Congratulations, you're still in first, player one. Player one, pick again. Mercury's period of this is about 59 Earth days. Player two. Right you are. Okay, let's get back. Photos from Voyager 2 help spot this moon of Uranus that's named for the heroine of As You Like It. Okay, player three. Aww. That is correct. <laughs> player three, you start. Saturn's second largest moon. It's named for the mother of the gods. Yes, player three? That's correct. <laughs> Select again. They're the bright streaks of lunar ejecta flung from an impact crater. Okay, player two. <laughs> correct. <laughs> player two, start us. From the German for rivulet, these trenches on the moon's surface probably carried lava. Let's hear it, player two. Yeah, good. <laughs> we return to you, player two. Hemi. Okay, player three.
You got it. <laughs> Player three, die, as in dicephalus. Yes, player two. That's correct. <laughs> All right, let's get back into this. Player two. Contra. Yes, player two. That's correct. <laughs> Please pick again. Anti. Yes, player three. Good. <laughs> now let's take a look at that $2,000 clue, shall we? Circum. Let's hear it, player three. You are correct. Good game. All of you will continue on to play Final Jeopardy when we return. We're back. The category for Final Jeopardy today is Characters in Shakespeare. You need to select your wager. Let's take a look at the last clue. To the consternation of the title character, we learn that this character was born by C-section. What did you say? How much do you add to your total with that correct response? And your response? How much do you add to your total with that correct response? Let's see your response. How much do you add to your total with that correct response? Congratulations, <laughs> player one. You are our new champion. So long.